The food system of the Pacific region is undergoing profound changes that will be felt for generations. It needs to face challenges like rapid population growth, urbanization, and the importing of cheap but nutritionally poor foods. These challenges are causing some of the highest levels of non-communicable diseases in the world, like obesity and diabetes. And on top of that, climate change is already hitting the region hard. Sea level rise, ocean acidification and extreme weather events are all expected to increase in the coming years and impact the Pacific's food system. Recently, a diverse group of policymakers, researchers, farmers and political leaders from the region came together in Fiji to think about the future of food in the Pacific. They spent three days creating four future scenarios for the Pacific region up to 2030. These scenarios are no crystal balls, but an attempt to think ahead. The four scenarios this group came up with help decision makers plan the region's actual future. First, tug of war. In this food scenario, there is a high economic connectedness to the rest of the world with strongly regulated governance of natural resources. It is a story of tough choices, clashing values and great opportunities. Many people have been able to take advantage of new economic developments. There is effective governance of natural resources. Forestry and fisheries are sustainable and productive. Initiatives to adapt to climate change have worked. Tuna helps to fill the shortfall in the supply of fish to domestic consumers. But although the region is more prosperous, many people have missed out. Little attention has been paid to the poorest and most vulnerable people, especially in rural areas. The diets of the poor are getting steadily worse and their capacity to pull themselves out of poverty is hampered by a lack of resources. In Living on the Edge, economic connectedness to the rest of the world is low, but there's strong regulation of natural resources. Young people in the region have high hopes and bright dreams for the future. However, in the years after 2020, global economic turmoil, because of increasingly serious climate extremes and the decline of development funds from donor countries, create a period of crisis and chaos in the region. The results of this difficult period are very diverse for the Pacific's nations. Wealthier and more resilient nations hold on to their ideas about a bright future, while others see financial ruin or an exodus of their populations to find more secure lifestyles elsewhere. Self-reliance and national-level resilience become the focus of policies in many countries. In Cash Now, Pay Later, there is little effective governance of natural resources, but there is a high economic connectedness to the rest of the world. In this scenario, there is rapid growth and the region is deeply embedded in global markets. Business is booming, at least for some. The newfound wealth is used to invest in infrastructure, schools and a rapidly expanding tourism industry. Extractive industries, such as fishing and forestry and agriculture, are expanding. This highly connected Pacific region comes at the expense of long-term sustainability. Local communities have been displaced to marginal land, which has affected lifestyles and increased the dependence on cheap, unhealthy imported foods. In Cash Now Pay Later, there is an unequal distribution of wealth an elite control of land and resources, and large populations of unemployed youth are causing civil unrest and political instability. In the last scenario, crisis in paradise, natural resources are unregulated and economic connectedness to the rest of the world is low. It sees the Pacific region overwhelmed by its challenges. Growing populations are placing huge pressure on food systems, Coastal fisheries continue to decline. There is widespread environmental degradation. Communities cope as best they can with climate change, but because their natural resources are degraded, they have fewer options to reimagine their future. Agricultural production continues to decline, and half of all Pacific Islanders are food insecure or malnourished, with devastating impacts on public health and economies. 
Rapid urbanisation and migration continues, with most young people leaving rural areas in search of economic opportunities in towns and outside their countries. Prolonged political instability has resulted in chaos. The weakened social fabric and simmering discontent is heightening fears of serious social unrest. It is important to remember that scenarios are what-if stories about the future. We can't predict the future, but we can try to imagine different futures as best as we can. And we can use these scenarios to help us see how we can take control of the Pacific region's future, to design plans and policies that are able to take on the challenges of these different scenarios. The scenarios will be used to help guide more integrated policies that will help allow the Pacific food system and the people who depend on it take on the challenges of the future and live healthy, prosperous and safe lives. If your organisation or community would like to use these scenarios to help you think strategically about the future, or if you are interested in learning more about scenario approaches, please get in touch with the Secretariat for the Pacific Community. These scenarios have been produced through a partnership between the Secretariat for the Pacific Community, the Technical Centre for Agricultural and Rural Cooperation, World Fish, and the CGIAR Research Programme on Climate Change, Agriculture and Food Security.